Hi everyone, Jen Bolster, advanced care paramedic and paramedic practice leader with BC Emergency Health Services within the Department of Clinical Governance and Professional Practice. Welcome to your December 2022 clinical practice update video, the last clinical practice update video for the year of 2022. And what a year it's been. Um, within the realm of clinical practice, there has been so many new clinical practice updates, governance structures, paramedic publications, and expanded opportunities for learning, growth, and professional development. Your commitment to providing quality clinical care for your patients has not gone unnoticed. And for that, we hope that you are all able to take a moment and pause, reflect, and appreciate the growth your own individual practice has seen over this past year. And before I begin, I'd just like to acknowledge that I join you today from the unceded and traditional territories of the Slaya Ayman nations. Uh, always delighted to share my gratitude and appreciation for being able to share these traditional lands in which I'm able to live, work, learn, and play. To begin with some practice update videos, a huge thank you to everybody who enrolled patients in the substance use assessee treat and referral pathway over the last couple of months. There has been a total of 41 referrals since the pathway went live in the summer, and October saw a total of 19 referrals for the month alone. November saw an additional 10 referrals for the month alone, which is a huge uptick in referrals and engagement with the pathway since the pathway went live. It's a really great alternative to emergency department conveyance for patients, which we know is not always the best place for them or the place that they would like to spend their time after they experience a drug poisoning event. Um, and really this pathway is a novel and really quite meaningful way to reduce drug related harm within the community. So please keep up the good work in utilizing this very important pathway. Mitigation shortages is a challenge that our organization faces regularly. A disruption in the manufacturing of one to 10,000 epinephrine preload syringes has resulted in a national shortage of the product. The Product Distribution Center continues to work with other sites to redistribute resources amongst provincial stakeholders. That being said, epinephrine in the one to 1,000 or the one milligram per one mil concentration remains available with no anticipated disruption in that supply. So paramedics are recommended to temporarily substitute your traditional cardiac arrest epinephrine concentration by drawing up one milligram in one milliliter in a 10 cc syringe and then diluting it with nine milliliters of normal saline to make the concentration of one milligram in 10 mils. Uh, that would be the results of the same traditional preload cardiac arrest epinephrine concentration. Just a reminder that if you are needing to administer epinephrine in the peri-arrest setting, you are going to have to dilute that solution again by expelling nine cc's of fluid and then drawing up an additional nine milliliters of fluid to create that 100 microgram per mil concentration um, down to a 10 microgram per mil concentration. A new pathway for patients with suspected large vessel occlusion strokes is now in place in the Kelowna area. Patients who are within 60 minutes driving time to Kelowna General Hospital may be conveyed directly to Kelowna General, even if this requires bypassing a closer facility. This patient pathway has been published in the handbook for your resource and access. Paramedics can now receive overdose alerts via text message to your ambulance phones. Text notifications are sent to subscribers who want timely information about illicit substances and increases in toxic drug poisonings within their community. Subscribing is quite easy. You just need to text JOIN to 253787. This is managed by the BCCDC and the Toxic Drug and Health Alert System. We aim to roll this out across the province to help prevent toxic drug-related harm and death. Um, and enrolling in this alert system is also a very meaningful way that not only paramedics can be mindful and aware of the state of drug poisonings and illicit drug toxicity within their communities, but also a way that you can be informed so that you can even share this information with patients and bystanders who you're interacting with on scene. This is a reminder for paramedics who are conveying patients who meet existing criteria for offload to the waiting room who present with minor or moderate injury or illness to please ensure that you as the attendant are communicating with both the receiving facility registration clerk as well as the triage nurse that you are offloading your patient to the waiting room. 
just make sure that when you are handing over this verbal communication, that you're also accompanying it with your EPCR that does document within the PCR that you are um, dropping off the patient in the waiting room and that they do meet self-registration criteria. As far as STEMI care goes, there has been 54 successful TNK administrations to date since the TNK pathway went live. Um, 11 of those have been since the expansion to Prince George and Nanaimo. Uh, so amazing work from all of the paramedics involved and really great feedback from not only the patients, but also the receiving facilities, the cardiologists and cardiac services BC. Also a huge kudos to the primary care crews for their use of 12 lead acquisition and identifying ST elevated myocardial infarctions in the pre-hospital environment and transporting to PCI. There has been 36 successful cases to date. So your work is directly benefiting patients and improving their outcomes. Really well done there. And finally, a huge shout out to paramedic and unit chief Mark Jessaroli for his first publication, performance of the medical priority dispatch system in correctly classifying out of hospital cardiac arrests as appropriate for resuscitation. Congratulations are also in order for other paramedics, Jacob Hutton and paramedic practice leaders, Nichelle Wall, as well as myself who did participate as co-authors in this study. The study discovered that the dispatch system in British Columbia has a high sensitivity and moderate specificity in sending the appropriate responses for out of hospital cardiac arrests deemed appropriate for treatment by paramedics. If you're looking for the full article, please reach out to clinical practice at bcehs.ca and we'll ensure to get you that study. Thank you for watching the December 2022 clinical practice update video. It has been a monumental year and I think I speak on behalf of my department when I say that we are looking forward to another big year for clinical practice in 2023 with the announcement of some very exciting scope of practice expansion, implementation and planning that inevitably will lead to the ability for paramedics to provide better care to their patients. We wish you a very happy and a very safe holiday season if you do celebrate a holiday during the month of December and a very happy new year. Thank you.